So one of the things I know that your church, um, and I say this about every man in the position of power, is that, I'm not saying you, but most men don't see sexism until they have a daughter, until they, until they have their baby girl, right. their wife, their mom grew up around it, didn't see it. And my husband said the same thing about Avery. He goes, oh my gosh, she can't grow up in a place where she's making 69 cents for every white male dollar. Right. And I'm like, "That's right, bro. What about me? My right, whole life. Right, in him right. till he had that girl. Right. One of the things that attracted me to your church is that, uh, you know, in the church I grew up in, the women at the most were the first lady. Right. They could be in the choir, and then they could never be the deacon, right? They could never um, do first communion. They could do first Sunday. It was always reserved for the men. And then uh, in my husband's church, the men even sit in the front, and there's a separate row for them. There never a level of leadership where men could be a part, women could be a part of that. Right. I know this that's different in your church. We right. have female ministers, and you know you elevated women to a place where they could even be in the pulpit, right, right here right. with you when we have guest pastors. Uh, tell me, was that intentional? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, a, I was fortunate to grow up in a church where my pastor, Dr. Amos Brown, affirmed women in ministry, and you know he was the one that even had women as deacons. And I'm like, that's what's up. And for me, you know, I got three sisters. My father died when I was young, so I had my mother. Some of the most influential people in my life have been women from Homer L. Davis to my grandmothers to my aunts. And I'm like, you know, I know what I would do if someone came for them wrong. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got married and even, you know, had a daughter, you know, that was kind of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, now, since I have them, they have, uh, they, they take great pride or delight in checking me whenever, you know, my masculine, mm -hmm. you know, subjectivity takes over. And, uh, yeah, but you're a man, and as a man, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, I'm, 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 I'm one of your number one advocates. You know, I'm, I'm out here, you know, and, but I'm telling you, so what has happened with me is, you know, fortunately, I grew up in a setting where that was kind of, mm -hmm. you know, taken for granted to, to affirm sisters, to support sisters. But the bottom line is I'm still a man, and they remind me of that all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll say like, and what really will get me is, you know, when I'm, when I'm trying to press my case and say, but yeah, I do this, I do that. I say, well, just like there's some white people who may do some right things fighting racism, it doesn't stop them mm -hmm. from being white because they've been programmed in this country in the name of whiteness. Mm -hmm. And I've been programmed, you know, in this world, you know, to be a man first. And yeah. there are certain faults that come with that that Got I can't it. escape. Yeah. So for me, though I want to give myself a pat on the back, you know, to have my daughter and my wife, you know, checking me, you know, on the regular, you know, because I, I never forget, I went to a meeting, and it was hilarious because I was invited to this meeting. I was invited. Okay. And, you know, after the meeting, well, when I walked into the meeting, I know it was a meeting of ministers, and it was like all men, and so I said, where are the sisters at? You know, and then I sat down for the rest of the meeting, and then we took pictures. The pictures went all over, and when those pictures went all over with the caption, these church leaders gather to discuss the future of the black church and not one woman. And there I am in it. Wow. I got, got my <laughs> lunch eaten, you know, at home at first. Home. Mm -hmm. And then I had even my, you know, even sisters who I've invited to preach here, you know, like, what's up with you? I, I thought you were, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, first thing I said was, where are the women? But you stayed. And I'm like, okay. You know, so I took my, so, so, so as progressive as I think I am, yeah, I yeah. still, you know, I'm still a man mm -hmm. and I still have to get checked every now and then because, you know, the sad reality of misogyny and sexism, mm -hmm. especially in the church, mm -hmm. uh, not to mention the world, is something we've got to always fight. So, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm down for that cause. So, you know, for me, it's vital that I'm on the front lines as an ally, you know, with our sisters because, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, a hypocrite 
and be out here for justice yeah. and then sisters experience injustice and I don't say anything. Exactly. Okay. Good stuff. No, definitely. I, I see it um, in the leadership of the church of just the ones who we see up front and you know, um, Danielle Ayers. And, oh, yeah. Uh, just having a lot of women that I know that he, he this is his sounding board, right? This is the leadership. So he listens to these people. You got that is right. Is it all men over 60 yeah. is what I look at. And um, who's pouring into him to say, hey, you know, don't forget. Right. That. And it's more than just celebrating us on Mother's Day or, you know, making sure. Or we Women's bring, Day. Or Women's Day. Right. <laughs> and, you know, making sure when we're talking about leadership in the church that it's not and the women. It is we have women leaders. Yeah. And that's normally, that's a thing here in our church, and it's not a big deal. So thank you for that. No, it, thank it you. It definitely means a lot. Uh, my question next now is about uh, a little bit more about the, the next generation of activists or kind of the, uh, some of the things that are happening now in, in the community. So um, we have tons of uh, marches. We have lots of issues. We're fighting the Trump administration. We're fighting our local community. We got a lot of things that are being pulled in a lot of places. Right. So there should be the next generation of leaders right um either being empowered or led or being mentored um and then you you're being at the front of that and grooming that next generation um i'll ask you two questions what are we doing wrong what are we doing right um and i've, I've gotten some ideas on you know we don't have stick to it right it's the next hot thing that we're mad about we're mad about the immigrant families this weekend and then Roseanne said something today we mad about it. Right. And then we have another Austin Sterling or Philando Castile or Eric Garner being killed. We're, we don't stick with stuff long enough um, to have any real progress. Uh, but we're feeling like we get hit every day exactly. we wake up. Exactly. <laughs> so by the time we get up, it's, now it's an NFL protest. So right. uh, what is the charge that you have for, if we're saying you are the president, you are the leadership that we look to now. Um, what do you What do you want to tell the next generation? What should we be doing? Okay, I want to start with, with what is right.